There are many ways to design a low poly house in Blender, but I'm going to show you one that I think works quite well. Before we actually get into Blender, I'd recommend getting a few reference images. I ended up using Midjourney to get these references, and these were the ones that I got. Now here in Blender, I can split the viewport apart, and I turned the left window to the image editor and added my reference, and then did this with my other two references other than just on top of each other. Now we can start designing. I added a cube and scaled it to make it into a beam, then added the bevel modifier. You can see that it wasn't beveling correctly, and that's because I didn't scale it in edit mode. To fix it, you can hit command A and select scale. Now add two loop cuts that we can use to warp the beam by moving and rotating them. Now you can duplicate and rotate the entire beam, and even change the loop cuts shapes that we created to eventually create the front of the house or structure. Like this. I then did another front, as I wanted the house structure to be indented a little bit to create a more unique shape. Once both were done, you can duplicate them and move them both backward. And since the one house I wanted the indent, I selected those beams and moved them back. Now it was time to create the panels by adding a plane and scaling it larger than the entire structure. And then, once it is larger than the structure, you can hit K for the knife cut tool and follow the outline. Once done, you can hit enter and it will add those vertices. Do this with the other section, and then you can duplicate both and move them back so it aligns with the outline. For the sides, you can do pretty much the same thing. Though, I did add a beam along the top, and aside from that, it's pretty much the same process. Now we can add the solidify modifier to all the panels for a thicker look. Once all that is done, we can cut out the windows and doors by using the knife cut tool that we used previously and then select the inside part of the outline and delete those faces. Now select the vertices that form the outline and duplicate them and hit P to separate them into their own object. Delete the solidify modifier on those objects, and move the wireframes out and extrude them back in. Now we need to select the entire outline. So do this by clicking Option E and extrude by normals to get the wireframes thicker. Then add the bevel modifier for a less blocky look. You can now do this with all the cutouts that we did. You can also add small beams to the windows to get the window to actually look like a window. Now you can add more details using this technique, and what I did was add a couple more windows and extruded part of the roof, doing practically the same thing. The only difference was is that I cut out the area I wanted extruded, then I scaled it so that it was flat. I also used the knife cut tool to add a chimney by getting the area I wanted and extruded it and shaped it how I pictured it. Other details like little cubes that were scaled and beveled can also be added to the sides for even more detail. The same can go for the shingles. The only difference for me was that I created a more custom shape and added those to the roof. Once your house design is complete, you can create a landscape or just a flat basic background like this if you would prefer. For the landscape though, I did end up creating a plane, and then with that plane, I went into edit mode, beveled the corners, and extruded the entire thing down. And then scaled it so it was a little bit smaller, and then repeated this process to go a little bit farther down. Then I went into the sculpting section and enabled Dine Topo. From there, I just sculpted the mini landscape. And once finished, I added the decimate modifier to make it more low poly. And I did a very similar thing for the mini water feature at the base. 
The main difference being is that I use a boolean modifier to make it flat. Now the rest is all about lighting and textures, which, since it's low poly, can all be basic materials. Once all of this is done, we got ourselves a low poly house. Now that we have a house, let's see how much more life Midjourney can add when I use the low poly house renders as reference images for the prompt for Midjourney. To do this, I literally just have to upload the renders to Discord, copy the image address, and type on the prompt with the image address included. I ended up using these four renders. And it came up with these results. Oh, and yes, each one of these mid-journey results were based on one of the four different renders that I just showed you. Honestly, I always find it quite surprising what these AI art systems are able to do, since it's actually really good. Sure, all the AI-generated images, at least right now, have errors, but using these as reference images, they turned out pretty good. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. If so, there's also a slingshot tutorial where you can make and animate it if you're interested. And also, before I go, I just want to say huge thanks to everyone who helped me finally get monetized here on YouTube. I can't believe I finally got the 4,000 required watch hours after over two years. Anyways, I'll see you later. Bye! Do your own.